what I want to talk about today is cybersecurity and what the, some of the biggest cybersecurity trends um, businesses are facing, how new technologies are introducing new threats to businesses. And I am really pleased I'm here with Kevin Curran. Uh, Kevin is a, a professor of cybersecurity at Ulster University in Northern Ireland. Um, and we are here at the, the Trust in Tech Summit. Um, you've just done a, a keynote, fascinating to hear some of the, the key trends around cybersecurity. Do you want to summarize some of those for me? What do you see as some of the, the, the big cybersecurity trends that are coming up that, that businesses need to be aware of? Yeah, and you're right. I mean, uh, sometimes you don't need new trends. Again, phishing continues to be an easy way for attackers to get malware onto a network because people will click on things, people will not pay attention, people are rushing out on a Monday morning trying to get the kids in the car and an email comes in telling them that their PayPal has been blocked and they're just thinking about the new thing that they're waiting to come and they want to clear it up and they just click on that email. So phishing generally is actually still a very productive way a low cost way for hackers mm. to get into a network, of course. But so what are some of the biggest phishing tactics that, that you are seeing? Or I, I think you talked about some of the biggest brand names that yeah. are being copied and used. Microsoft is number one at the moment, but Netflix and PayPal and you know Apple, all these are still being used. And again, spear phishing as well. And it's funny, I, I just met um, a lawyer friend of mine lately who told me that one of her clients back in Northern Ireland was scammed out of £30,000. And it was that she was supposed to transfer the money to the solicitor on a particular day. The email came into her the day that she was expecting, around the day, and she didn't really have any qualms about you mm. know sending the money through. But it turns out that a lot of law firms are infiltrated already, that their email servers have been broken. The scammers are waiting for legitimate transactions to occur and they they you know they get in there beforehand wow. and again so it, this is commonly known within law firms again so law firms will never ask for that money to be done in such a way but we've moved to a different scale of things where people are patient hackers are patient waiting for transactions and then asking for the funds again so of course wow. That money will never come back to her. I mean, it's just a nightmare, and it it's happening increasingly. You know, it's a it's a type of spear phishing as well, where you identify someone. But of course, ransomware is causing havoc within organizations. Again, that's where malware gets onto someone's PC or their desktop, and their files are encrypted. And the only way to get them back is to pay a ransom again, which is supported by cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, which mm. are allow the criminals to remain anonymous and in the past of course they would have had to ask for a western union or you know there was no other way to do it really mm -hmm. but now with cryptocurrencies they can actually be remote they can be anonymous and they can keep sending out this ransomware until you know someday we solve the problem but at the moment there is nothing on the horizon apart from types of virtualized images in other words every time you click on something you're literally running within its own operating system there is moves by Microsoft again, who have the dominant platform Windows to try to address this, but this will be some time in the distance before we actually have a solution for ransomware. And, and one of the threads you talked about earlier was actually a, a PowerPoint attachment that you only have to hover over by mouse yeah. to, to run a script. Yeah, That's it, quite scary. It is, yeah. And of course, the biggest value bug bounties that Apple will pay is for um, non-click zero days. In other words, if you can get an exploit, which is sent to someone, but they do not have to click in it, they give the highest payout from the likes of Apple again. So these are the gold standards of exploits again, because mm. again, it can be done, but of course it's increasingly difficult. And, you know, it's funny, I just gave one of my closing talks to my cybersecurity students this week, and of everything I tell them, and I show them how to exploit things and penetration testing and cloud cracking of passwords and everything else. But the number one thing to do is to update update your device, update your laptop, update your phone, update your software when it comes in, because again, even though there are very, you know, clever hackers out there, but of course, some of the best security researchers in the world work for Google, work for Microsoft, and work for Apple. Mm. And when they release those patches every month again, most of them are security updates. And again, mm. the one thing you can do is to remain update again so the hackers would have to move to the low hanging fruit and the mm -hmm. low hanging fruit is the older operating systems again the ones like windows xp which are never patched again and windows 7 again because 
One thing people don't realize is every single month on the second Tuesday, it's called Patch Tuesday, Microsoft release an update for Windows. Now, hackers watch that and they go, okay, what was updated? And Microsoft outlined what was updated, which software. So they go along and say, okay, I see there's a security update for xyz.com. And because Windows 10 shares so much of the code base with Windows XP, they go, I wonder, is that also affecting Windows XP? Let me see, oh yeah, the files are mm. blah, blah, blah. Oh, wow, I can see what they fixed. Now we have another exploit for Windows XP. So every single month that passes, Windows XP, Windows 7, other versions of Windows, which are not supported, get weaker and weaker and the exploits grow. And yet a significant amount of people are still running these and companies and servers and ATMs around the world mm. run a form of Windows XP. Mm. They become more vulnerable. And that's where the hackers go to the low hanging fruit. Wow. So keep your, your systems up to date. Keep one. Up to date. And I, I guess with phishing emails, what this tells us is that actually we need to create a culture where everyone is aware of their own responsibility that they play in, in keeping systems safe, is there, that right? There is, and there's also educational tools now again that sometimes um, companies will send phishing emails to their own employees, the employee clicks on it and it goes to the website and they, and they say, oh, gotcha, you shouldn't have clicked on that, this could have been malware. So that can play a role as well, but also there's also standards, there's a DMARC standard, it won't send you to sleep, but if companies implemented it properly, then it would be so much more difficult for spammers to use all their ser other servers for sending mail. Mm. Because of course, spam doesn't cost anything. They tried to address the problem a number of years ago, before blockchain actually. Blockchain works every 10 minutes a new Bitcoin is formed. It's formed because machines work on a puzzle to solve an equation in some way, and the first who gets that and announces it to the rest of the blockchain wins, gets it to blockchain. It works on a mathematical number crunching. Mm. Microsoft proposed that about 10 years ago for email. They wanted that every time we send an email, our computers or our devices would do a small um, solving equation. Not noticeable to us, but noticeable for someone who's trying to send out a million emails an hour. Mm. And of course it never got adopted. Mm. But it was a solution because unfortunately spam is free. It doesn't cost the hackers anything to spend, send a spam email. So beyond phishing emails and spear phishing, what other security threats do businesses need to be aware of? The Internet of Things again. How many devices have they got connected? Did they really need to have a door, you know, ring bell, a webcam, uh, you know, a fish thermometer, you know, a thermometer in a fish tank which is connected to the network, the Wi-Fi kettle? All these things can be points of vulnerability. And again, that the showdown search engine I talked about again has all these exploits available. We know the IP addresses, we know the ports, we know the exploits which will work against them. And most people forget about these devices, mm. do not update them, and they can be a way in for hackers as well. They also lead, unfortunately, to an increase in denial of service attacks because hackers will rebound off compromised webcams and use them to bring down other sites, mm. banks and businesses as well, and use that for ransomware. So all these weak devices leaves the internet worse for us, the consumer. Mm. Anything else you're seeing that, that you see on the horizon or that you're seeing coming up in terms of threats? Um, again, I mean, there's quantum computers along the way, again, yes. so quantum cryptography, but we have more or less designed for that as well. But of course, you know, uh, again, we are also using tools again. There's a lot talked about AI today and artificial intelligence. Is starting to play a role within cybersecurity as mm. well. It's able to spot, stop our spot patterns. Yes. Because the one thing, AI, when you break it down, is patterns. It's able to detect patterns in data. Mm. And of course, it can do that as well because now our networks are so complex. There's so many events happening, so many devices in larger organizations. You can't possibly sit there and monitor the network for compromises. Mm. But artificial intelligence can do that. You can yeah. have a baseline, you can have anomaly detection, it can improve over time, mm. and it can be a great tool for, you know, for the CSO, for whoever's in charge of the network. Mm. So if you were to say, okay, Mr. or Mrs. Business Leader, what would be your top tips to them to make sure that they are resilient and, and they, they address the, the issues that, that now come from cybersecurity? Yeah, to not cut corners in cybersecurity. Um, again, finally, the CEOs and management are realizing that 
the fines imposed by the GDP or the European General Data Protection Regulations again, the companies that can now face up to 4% of their income turnover, mm. a fine that large, that has woken up a lot of senior management who previously thought, no, if we haven't had a hack this week, we're not going to have one. Mm. But now they realize, well, actually, did, did, we have the, did we have the data encrypted properly? Did we take proper security precautions? Can we prove it later if we're trying to be prosecuted? Mm. In other words, now they've woken up that they have to spend and data is very important. And finally, the world is also protecting us as consumers. GDPR, the principles are actually very good. Mm -hmm. They try to stop companies doing, you know, acting nefariously, using dark practices, subscribing us when we didn't want to subscribe. Now they have to be more upfront about it. Mm -hmm. And that is only good for us mm -hmm. as well. And they have to pay attention to our data because our data is very important now. If it gets leaked, the more it gets leaked, the more the attackers have on us mm. as well. You know, I'm not even talking about medical records yet. You know, we haven't seen the nightmare scenario of a data breach of an internet service company where all the browsing records of someone is, you know, is released. But mm. we will see more and more breaches in the future because one thing that we've learned is, you know, history does repeat. It shows us patterns. We can learn from it. And we're seeing that a lot of companies are simply not good at protecting our data. Mm. Do you have any good or bad examples that, that just highlight what you can do that is good and maybe highlight what can happen if you don't get it right? Yeah, I mean, there's still companies out there who don't encrypt um, user passwords. Mm. They don't use what we call salting techniques as well as being able to not only just taking someone's password and encrypting it in a certain way, but some of them should be using what we call a salt. It's where you add a value. It can be just the username itself added to the password and then encrypted. Then there's different ways of encrypting it with PKD, BF. There's different forms of doing this, mm -hmm. but a lot of them do not do it mm -hmm. because that can slow down the hackers as well. So a lot, just because you're a programmer, you can be the best programmer, but if you haven't been taught about secure practices mm -hmm. as well as that, you can end up implementing things very badly from yeah. a security point of view. So some ways, again, coding departments need to, you know, their, their staff need to be sent on secure coding courses mm -hmm. as well. So we need more security training, even within the IT department, not to mention the employees. Very good. Thank you. That was very useful. Thank you.